Hey, how's it going? This is Seth from RE Tipster. In this video, I'm going to give you a detailed overview of a cloud-based phone system that I use for my various businesses. It's called Open Phone. And Open Phone is a very useful service for several different reasons. Probably the first and foremost reason is just privacy and organization. So whenever I'm sending out any kind of a marketing push, whether it's direct mail or text messages or anything like that, and I'm trying to tell people to respond to me, either or call me back or send me a message back, anything like that. I don't want people to respond to the number on my personal phone right here in my pocket. What I want them to do is respond to my business phone number so that I can route all of that communication through the right channels. And I don't have people calling me or texting me at all hours of the day and night. With a service like Open Phone, I can set up one or more business phone numbers that I can route those calls and texts and other messages through. And I can do all kinds of fancy things like setting at business hours so those calls only come to me during certain hours of the day and certain days of the week or I can have those calls forwarded to another number or I can have those calls just go directly to voicemail and on the texting front it's very easy to send and receive texts from the open phone app and they've got a great app that works either on your desktop or through a web browser or you can just do all this from your mobile device it works pretty well everywhere and it's pretty easy to use I think a lot of open phone users they don't even really need a tutorial like what I'm about to show you but just in case you have no idea what you're doing or if you get stuck on any part of this process, you can refer back to this video and figure out how to get unstuck. And we're going to cover a lot of different stuff in this video. So I'm going to include timestamps on this video. I'm going to show it right on the screen right now. So if you want to jump around to the part that you're most interested in, you can do that. And this is ideal for people who are thinking about using Open Phone and they haven't signed up yet. We have an affiliate link to Open Phone beneath this video. We earn a really small kickback from that if anybody clicks through that link and signs up for Open Phone. Or if you're already an open phone user, you can use this too. So open phone is not the first cloud-based phone service like this that I've used. I've actually used other ones for years prior to using open phone. And I can say just from my own experience that a lot of the other options out there are either really slow or really clunky or really difficult to understand and navigate through. And even when you do need customer service, the customer service is terrible. It's really, really bad. But open phone is probably the easiest interface that I've seen so far. In my experience, I've only encountered two drawbacks with open phone, and they may or may not be drawbacks for you, depending on who you are and what you need. So the first one is customer service. The customer service is pretty good from every time I've tried to reach out to them, but it's limited to email. So if you need instant help, like right now, you're kind of stuck with email. So you can send them an email and wait for them to respond. I've always gotten responses from them like within the day on a business day. So it's not like you have to wait forever, but if you need lickety split help, like right now, at the time of this recording, they don't have a phone line that you can call in and actually talk to somebody. The other potential drawback with open phone is that again, at the time of this recording, you can't send or receive faxes from your open phone number within your open phone account. And apparently there is a way to do this with a Zapier integration that I have not messed with. I've not done this at all. My choice instead is to just not have the ability to send or receive faxes and just kind of be done with it. If somebody ever desperately needs to send me a fax, then I can set up some temporary way to do that. Even though some people do still use faxing technology out there, for the most part, if somebody really needs to send me some kind of an electronic image, it's not that hard to just take out your phone and take a picture and text or email it that way. Not saying that's the most secure way to do it, but like if there's no other way, that's usually even easier than sending a fax. So that's why I've decided to just ignore the whole faxing situation. But if you're somebody who desperately needs that ability to send and receive faxes, I'll include a link beneath this video with more information about how you can pursue setting up that Zapier integration where you can, you know, allow people to fax stuff to you. So check that out if you want to. So without further ado, I'll jump into the open phone website. And I'll show you how to sign up. If you're not already signed up, I'll give you a tour of the website. I'll show you how my business phone numbers are all set up. And I think you'll find it pretty helpful. Let's check it out. Okay, so if you click on the RE Tipster affiliate link, it should take you to a page that looks something like this. Depending on when you're watching this, maybe this will look a little bit different, but it's pretty straightforward. All you got to do if you want to get started is click try for free and you can get started that way. And it's going to have you enter in your email address and your phone number and you'll have to verify your identity. You'll have to link it up to an actual phone number. So not another cloud based phone number like with Google Voice or something like that. It's got to be like the literal phone in your pocket, that phone number to verify your identity. 
So it's pretty straightforward and simple. I'm not going to show you all those steps here. One thing I do want to point out as you're going through that sign up process is that there's a few different pricing plans and they're all a pretty good deal in terms of the cost. Of course, pricing is known to change over time. So depending on when you're watching this, the pricing may be different. You can pay monthly or yearly and you're going to get a better deal if you sign up for yearly. For what I'm going to show you here in this video, you'll have to sign up for the premium account, which is 20 bucks per month if you pay annually. It is technically possible to work with standard if you're willing to deal with some of the annoying limitations that you'll have if you go with that plan. But if you want to use all the features that I'm going to show you, if you just want it to be easy and work, go with this premium plan. And if you're cheap like me, you might be looking at this and being like, oh, seriously, I got to pay more. Just let me put you at ease. The previous phone system that I was using prior to open phone, I had to pay more than twice this amount for a system that was not as good as open phone. So just let me reassure you for what you get with open phone for this price. This is a very, very good deal. Don't let this discourage you. Don't think twice about it. Just do it. It's a great value for what you're getting. And I'm going to flip the screen around because I already have an open phone account with several phone numbers in there. And I'm going to show you how I have my phone numbers and answering rules and business hours and all this stuff set up. I'm not saying you have to do it the way that I do, but this will at least give you a template to work with and an example to follow if you're trying to run a similar type of business that I am. And actually, for that matter, I'm running a few businesses through my open phone account. So I'll give you the tour and I'll show you how it all works. Okay, so this is my account. And like I mentioned, I'm actually running three different businesses out of this one open phone account. Most people probably are not doing that. So I'm just going to quick explain uh, what's going on over here with all these phone numbers on the left. And this is where you can see all of the phone numbers that you have in your account. So I run a land flipping business out of this. I run RE Tipster out of this. And I also have a storage facility. Most people who are watching this are probably running some kind of a real estate investing business or even a land flipping business like I do. And that's what these three numbers are right up here at the top. So the land flipping business, really the whole function is to find really cheap land deals and then buy them from highly motivated sellers and then turn around and sell them for more money. And when you're running any kind of a flipping business like that, whatever it is you're flipping, it's helpful to have two separate brand names so that when you buy the thing from the seller, you can kind of have one dedicated business identity for that process. And then when you turn around to sell it, you sort of put on a different hat with a different business identity with a different website and a different phone number. So you almost kind of look like a different company, even though it's all functioning under the same LLC in my case. So that's why I have two separate phone numbers. They're both toll free numbers. This one right here that says land buying, it's an 888 number. So this is the phone number that goes on all of my direct mail pieces that I send out when I ask motivated sellers to call me back to sell their property to me. That's the phone number that I give them. So just based on that phone number alone, they can't really tell where I am in the country, although they could see it on my return address. But just the phone number alone doesn't doesn't give away my location by the area code. This phone number is also what goes on my buying website. So basically anytime anybody is calling me with the idea that they're going to sell their property to me, that's the number that they see and that they use. And when people call that number, I've had it set it up different ways over the years. Currently when they call it, they just hear a voicemail greeting. It doesn't even ring. It just starts playing a voicemail greeting and they can leave me a voicemail after that if they want to. In the past, I've also had it set up to get redirected to a call center where a live person answers the call. That's also a fine way to do it. There's different pros and cons associated with that approach. Or some people can even take these calls live. I've never done that because I don't want the phone to rule my life and dictate how I spend my time and when I spend my time, but that's another way you can do it. And then down here where it says land sales, similar concept. This is also a toll free number. And this is the number that goes on my selling website. So where all of my property listings go. And also whenever I'm posting a property listing on a selling website, this number would also go there. And again, it is a toll free number so they can't see my area code. They don't have to pay long distance fees if, if that's still a thing for some people. And when people call this, depending on the time of the day, it'll either go directly to my phone or it can go to a nice voicemail greeting. Or if I had a salesperson, it could go directly to them as well. And then there's also this main switchboard number. And this is the number that goes on my business card. And it's kind of like a general purpose number. If I don't know why a person is calling, if I'm not sure whether it's to buy a property or sell a property or just talk to me about something else, 
They can call this number and this one does have my local area code on it. And again, I have a separate video that explains what happens when a person calls that number. So you can check that out if you want to see more specifics on that. But just in terms of how open phone works, let's get right into that. So with open phone, they have a really good mobile app and that's usually what I am using when I'm receiving calls or listening to voicemails or sending texts or making calls, anything like that. I'm just doing it right from my mobile device. It's really easy to use. Another way to do it though, is right here from a desktop device. Like I'm recording this right now on my computer. This is also a really good place to set up your account for the first time when you're trying to figure out the correct settings. It's a lot easier to do it from a computer like this. I'm going to go right here to my land main number, and I'm actually in the process of porting over all my numbers from another cloud based phone service right now. As you can see, a couple of these are still in the process of doing that. So this is kind of an interesting time to be shooting this video because not all of these numbers are even active yet, but I can still show you how open phone works. So let's say we want to make a phone call. All we have to do is go up here and just click this phone icon and just type in whatever number we want to call. I could type in my own phone number and give it a call right now. And also before you actually make that call, you want to make sure that your settings are set up correctly. So I've got a nice little microphone right here that I'm going to make sure is selected so that when I talk, I'm talking through the microphone, not through the computer mic, which has much lower quality audio. And then for speakers, I'm going to have it play back out of that which is actually going to headphones that go to my ears. I probably have an unnecessarily fancy setup here because I actually use all this stuff to record podcast episodes and all that. So you don't need all this fancy stuff, but this is just how mine works. And then for the ringtone. So I might actually want to have this play out of my computer speakers, which is what is currently selected just because if it goes to my headphones and I'm not wearing them, I might not hear that. And there's also this way up here that you can enable notifications so that when people call, even if you don't have your web browser open up, it'll still let you know and you can answer your calls that way. So just make sure everything is set up. And once you got that number in there, just click enter and it's gonna start calling. And uh, let's see if it's gonna ring on my phone. Yep, it's ringing right now. I can answer that and talk to myself right now if I want to, but I'm not gonna do that because that's weird. So I'm gonna go ahead and end that call. So whenever a voicemail comes through, it's gonna show up right here, almost as if it was like a text message that came through and you can just click right here and listen to it. And it's going to attempt to transcribe whatever that person is saying. It won't necessarily get it right, as you can see here that I'll show you in just a second, but you know, it will at least attempt to show you in text what was being said without you actually listening to it. And this was a message that I just left for myself just so we could hear it. So let's check it out. Hey Seth, this is Seth, just doing a little test voicemail for the uh, open phone tutorial. Hope this is helpful. See ya. So almost got it right, but not quite. And whenever you're talking with somebody like this, this is actually really helpful for sending texts, whether you're doing this on your mobile device or on a desktop computer like this. Uh, and you can also start a new text message just by doing this and typing out whatever uh, person you want to send the message to. But whenever you're done with this, all I have to do is hover over this and click this check mark and mark it as done. And it's going to clear it out of here so that it's not cluttering up your space. If you ever want to go and see all of those done messages that you've cleared out, you can click on this and go check out done. Let's see what it says there. That pretty much covers, I think, how to send and receive calls and text messages. One nice thing about open phone is that uh, when you do get a call on your mobile device, it plays a different tone than what you would normally hear if somebody was calling you through your regular phone. And it also has a little notification with a specific icon and name of your business that you've chosen. So for example, if I got a call through this number, the notification that I would see on my phone, in addition to a different unique ringtone would be this little icon and it would say land main so that I pretty much know before I even pick up my phone to look at it, I know, oh, okay, this call is coming in from this number. So I can kind of put on the right hat before I even pick up the phone to answer it. I just kind of know what frame of mind I need to be in and know that it's not a personal call. And one note about faxing is that open phone cannot do faxing. At least at the time of this recording, you cannot send or receive faxes through any of your open phone numbers, which actually kept me from switching over to open phone for a while because that was something that I just wanted to have. Although uh, open phone does have a solution to this sort of, you can go over here and click on settings and then integrations, and you can set up a zap with something called Zapier. If you're at all familiar with Zapier, it's actually awesome. Uh, it takes a little bit to figure out how to use it, but you can basically use Zapier to connect open phone with like anything else on the internet, which opens up a lot of possibilities 
one of those things you can connect it with is a fax service. And this is a separate third party thing, but you could connect open phone to fax plus, which would therefore allow you to have this faxing functionality with open phone. I'm not currently doing this. I might at some point in the future, if it ends up being a need at this point, uh, my stance is that I'm going to just not allow faxing anymore because it's so stinking easy to just take a picture or scan whatever document you're trying to fax and just send it through email or text. It may not be like totally secure per se, but it's just a lot easier to do that. And a lot of people are doing that with me anyway. So I'm kind of just choosing to eliminate faxing at this point in time, but the jury is still out on whether or not I will go down this road. But just so you know, if faxing is something that you're just dead set on and you need to have it working with your open phone numbers, it is possible to this kind of thing. So now that we have a basic understanding of how to send and receive texts and calls and all that stuff, I'm going to show you just some other things you can set up with your phone numbers. One thing down here, let's go check out notifications. So you can set up this work schedule thing, which will apply to all of your phone numbers where you can basically just set certain times of the day when you don't want to be bothered. And you can see how I have mine set up right here. You first have to select your time zone, make sure that's right. And you can set up a custom one like what I have here. And the reason I did a custom one is because it's not the same hours every single day. It's different hours on the weekends, or you can set it up just, you know, set times every single day, no matter what the day is or weekdays, that kind of thing. So that's where you can do that. You can also do this individually in each phone number as well. And this kind of comes into play if you have other team members, this will apply those rules to all of them as well. But if it's just you, then it's kind of redundant. You're doing the same thing here and there. But this is kind of like the global settings for yourself as an individual user It would be right here under settings, notifications, and then work schedule. Another really cool thing about open phone is they have this analytics section where you can see a lot of the analytics uh, of all the call activity that's going on in your company. And again, I just ported my numbers over recently, so there's not a whole lot to look at here yet, but as a lot more activity continues happening from day to day, you can see a lot more information about the different calls that are coming in and what's going on there and the busy times of the day and all that stuff, which can be useful information to have, especially if you're using a third party virtual receptionist, you can kind of understand what the demand is for that service and whether that's justified and when it's most justified, all that kind of thing. Now, if we go over here to the individual phone numbers, so all you have to do is hover over the number and then click these three dots and then click on settings and you can get into that number itself and start organizing how you want this phone number to function. So as you can see, I have mine labeled land main because it's just like the general purpose number that people call in for my land business if they call in at all. Caller ID name. So you can set this up so that when you're calling another person, they can see your company name on their caller ID, just understand who's calling. And you may or may not want to use this depending on how you use your phone number. Uh, all you'd have to do is click on this and add a new caller ID name and put the name in here. You're limited to 15 characters. And once you do set this up, it doesn't happen immediately. It takes a few days for it to like officially register. I'm not sure why, but uh, anyway, if you want to do that, that's where you can do it. And uh, you can auto record calls if you want. So for example, if you are using a virtual receptionist service, or if you have an employee or whatever your reason, you can record your calls automatically. And there is some compliance stuff you'll have to be aware of if you decide to do that. I'm not currently doing it, but if I wanted to, all I have to do is click that toggle switch. It's pretty easy. International calling and messaging. Currently, as you can see, this is off. So I can't really communicate internationally with other countries, but if you wanted to, it's really easy to do that. And there are some extra costs associated with that. And you can see what the costs are per country right here. So it's not too terrible. But uh, just kind of depending on how your business works, for example, on my storage facility, probably wouldn't make a ton of sense to have to do that because almost everybody who uses it is in my local market. But if I'm running some kind of an internet business or something that works all over the world, then it probably would make sense. So there you go. Uh, moving on down here. So I am currently the only user in this company. So it's pretty simple for me, but you could add however many users you want. If you have multiple employees, you just add them here. And the benefit of having additional users or other hands on deck, so to speak, is that you can sort of integrate them into the answering rules of the number so that say, if you're not available during certain times of the day, maybe you could forward to somebody else, or maybe you could forward to multiple different people at the same time. So that can be a useful thing to have. Now, right here where it says call flow. So this 
is where a lot of things can happen if you want it to. So I'm gonna expand this right here. So similar to the other notification preferences that I showed you just a minute ago with the work schedule. So this is where you can do the same thing, but it's isolated to this individual number. So I've got pretty much those same business hours set up right here. And if somebody calls after hours when we're not open, they can hear a specific voicemail greeting. For me, I have the same message playing, whether it's after hours or during business hours. But some people might want to place something different. Say if they call after hours and you want to tell them, hey, we're closed, but we're open at this time. You could have a separate recorded greeting and play that during those hours if you want. So this is what mine sounds like. Hello, and thank you for calling. If you know your party's extension, you may dial it at any time. If you ever want to change this greeting, uh, there's a few different ways you can do it. You can upload a file. That's what I did. I hired a professional voiceover artist on Fiverr to record that greeting for me. I just wrote a script and they read it for me and it came out pretty good. You could also record it yourself right through your computer. Or you can do this text-to-speech thing where you can just type out whatever you want and it will say it. And it doesn't sound exactly human, but it sounds, you know, good enough for most people if you don't have any other options. So I'll just show you what that sounds like really quick. So we'll click speak it and it will turn this into an audio file. We can play it and listen to it. Hey there, thanks for calling. We can't come to the phone right now, but leave a message and we'll call you back as soon as we can. There you go. So it's not bad. That could work. But again, I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to use my greeting that I already have. Uh, so moving on down here where it says phone menu. So again, this is where I have extensions set up. And again, I get into this more in the other video. This is where you can upload another voicemail greeting if you want it to say something different than the after hours greeting. Again, I've got the exact same thing playing here as well. Hello and so same thing. And you can change it in the same way if you want to. And just a quick overview on how this menu works. So as I mentioned, I've got this phone number for the buying arm of my business and a phone number for the selling arm of my business. And then just the main phone number for people who are trying to get a hold of me personally or just leave a voicemail in the general mailbox. So the way I have this set up is a person can push one and it will forward to this other number. And then it will just play the way it normally would where it goes directly to voicemail. Or if they push two because they're trying to buy one of our properties from the sales department, then it would go to the selling voicemail greeting or follow whatever rules are set up for that based on the time of day. Or if they push five, it would just come directly to my phone if I'm available based on the time of the day as well. So that's how that can be done. They can also like verbally say the word sales or admin or whatever. And based on how you have your greeting worded, they may or may not even realize they can do that. Like if you don't say, just say the word sales, then they're not going to know that. But just be aware that functionality is available there in open phone. And then down here, the default actions. So this is what you want it to do if the person just does nothing. So if they don't push anything, you know, if they just wait, what's going to happen? And I have it set up to just send them directly to voicemail. So they're going to hear a beep and they can leave that voicemail. But you could also have it just repeat that same voicemail greeting over and over and over again until they push something. Or you can have it forward to another open phone number. Say if you have another user in your company that you want it to go through. And this is one area where you have to have that premium subscription in order to use these bottom ones. I think it's maybe these bottom three ones. These other ones at the top, I think you can just use that standard plan for. And the same thing goes for this as well. So I think it's these top three you could do if you had that standard plan. But in order to use these bottom ones, you'd need that more expensive plan that I'm signed up for. And then down here again, this is the same voicemail greeting that I have again. You can have it transcribe voicemails or not. As you saw earlier, I have it doing that because why not? And you could filter profanity. So see if you just get a ton of nasty calls and you just don't want to hear that, <laughs> you could turn that on. It's up to you. And then down here for auto replies. So this is a cool thing that not every cloud-based phone service can do. So you can set this up so that say if somebody calls you, but nobody answers or it goes to voicemail and they leave a voicemail, you can have it automatically send them a text message saying like, hey, sorry, we missed your call. We'll call you right back or, hey, give us your reference number and we'll look into the, your property more and then we'll give you a call back. You can have it say whatever you want just on autopilot, which can help a lot with increasing engagement with people. And you can set it up based on whether they're doing this during or after business hours. I probably would not do that on this particular number because that's not really why people are calling this number. But I would do this for like my land buying number, for example, say if somebody's calling because they are responding to one of my direct mail pieces and they want to sell their property and they left me a voicemail and I didn't answer, obviously, because it's set up by default for me to not answer. In those cases on this number, again, not on the one that I'm working on right now, on this number over here, I would say something like, you know, hey, 
Thanks for your call. Something like that. There's nothing magical about this message. Feel free to word it however you want, but that's just the idea in terms of letting them know there's someone here. We're paying attention. We're listening. Even though you may not be in that moment, it can at least, you know, increase engagement that way. Again, I'm going to cancel that because that's not how I would do it for this number. And then down here, integrations. So you can have this set up so that anytime anybody leaves a message or a voicemail or even misses a call, it will send an email to whatever email address you want. This is the email address that I just have signed up for with this account, but you could have this send it to multiple email addresses if you want. And then you can also connect this to Slack if you want to, which I'm not currently doing, but if you're someone who uses Slack in conjunction with your business, which is very common for businesses with teams, you could do it that way as well. And there's also other ways to do this kind of thing more with Zapier as well, back over here in the integrations section. So that's just a quick tour of how you can have things set up with just one individual number. Some other easy things you can do up here. If you ever want to set up, do not disturb just temporarily. You could do that here as well. It works very similar to the way that Slack does. If you're at all familiar with that, this can be a useful thing. If you know you're going into a meeting for an hour or something like that, and it's not necessarily a planned thing. You just kind of on the fly want to be on do not disturb and not get calls. You can do it that way. And also if you are using a virtual receptionist service, there is one called Pat Live that I've done a review on and just kind of did a deep dive on how that one works. And I've used it in the past and it's certainly not the only one out there, but if you're just curious about how does that work and do I want to do that? And what does that cost? And does that make sense to me? I'm going to include a link to that review. You can go check that out if you want, just to learn more about how that one works. And again, if if you want to learn more about how I have my system set up and some other automations I have in place, I've got a separate video where I will dive more into that as well. So thanks again for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you're not already using open phone and you want to, you're more than welcome to click through the RE tipster affiliate link. We'll earn a very small commission from that, from anybody who signs up through that link. It's retipster.com forward slash open phone, all one word. And I wish you all the best with whatever phone service you decide to use. Thanks again. Talk to you again soon.